don't clean first. I need to take a picture. This afternoon, we are doing a restorative carpet cleaning. It's a three-step program where we usually start off with a pie lifter, which runs on a coconut husk, which is all natural fibre. So basically, it will dry scrub all the carpets and vacuum the top soil of dirt first. After that, we'll proceed with the pre-spray of the carpet with a shampoo and disinfectant. And then we do a full rotary scrubbing of the entire place of the carpet. Then thereafter, we will do the hot water extraction with only water, so we don't use any other chemicals for the further extraction. We want to clean from deeper and as much of the dirt and grind that we can remove from the carpet. We have asked them to a demo uh, to our offices previously and we actually inked a four-year contract with Big Red to do the office cleaning uh, of our carpets and, and office furniture. The pie lifter does generally what common vacuums might do, where we remove the top soil of the dirt. With the rotary scrubbing, we're actually going deeper thereafter to scrub and remove more dirt. So thereafter, the hot water extraction with high pressure hot water, we will actually go deeper and remove everything out from the carpet. So usually, we are going to clean 70 to 80% more deeper than general vacuums are going to do for you. What we're going to do today is we have two samples of carpets. We are going to do a two-hour test and a 12-hour test. We have an inquiry from one of our clients that is going to install new carpets for their client. Now, before they do the installation, they want to ensure that they are installing the right carpet, which has some resistance to stain. Chili first, then greasy food, coffee. We're going to use the assistance of four different kinds of stains. Coffee, uh, chili sauce, uh, greasy food, uh, and uh, red wine. We are going to purposely stain the carpets, leave them on for two hours, and then we'll do another one which is 12 hours later for similar stains, and we'll see the results after that. Based on the results, we will propose to our client that a uh, certain carpet is recommended over the other. This is the carpet that we're going to be doing the testing on. This is one of them. This is 50% nylon and 50% corn fiber. So as you can see that we have split the carpet into two. One is a two-hour test, one's a 12-hour test. In each of the grid, we will be applying the stains that I mentioned earlier. This is the first carpet that we'll be doing on. The second carpet is over there. That's 50% wool and 50% nylon. From my experience, uh, carpets with nylon tend to fare better in carpet cleaning tests such as these. And the reason for that is nylon is a very durable material and it would perform better during stain removal treatments. And then after two hours, we'll clean it and see the results of the cleaning and the effectiveness of the stain protection, uh, which is currently on the carpet.
Carpet cleaning tests are not a regular service that we provide, but once in a while, clients who have uh, major projects do ask for them, as they would be spending significantly on carpets and they do need to get it right. The chili sauce, you can still see remnants of it. This curry stain, you can still see a little bit of it. Coffee stain is lightened, wine stain lightened. At the end of the test, we recommended to our client that they should choose the carpet with the composition of 50% wool and 50% nylon as it showed better resistance to stains. Hey, morning guys. Yes, morning. How are you? Good. Nice day. So we have quite a big fur family. We've got uh, Bam Bam, our big fluffy husky, and five cats. Sometime, I think, in 2020, and it was exactly the time we were thinking our couch <laughs> needs a really deep clean. Uh, the cats also scratch and chill on it, so over time it does get a little bit dirty. My friend who used them, she showed the before and after pictures, and I was like, whoa, that's exactly what we need. So right now what we're doing is uh, we're just yeah. uh, protecting the flooring. So anytime we do any upholstery cleaning at someone's house, or whether it's a commercial office, what we do is we protect the areas that uh, potential will be exposed to the cleaning. Next, we're gonna be applying the cleaning solution on the sofas. So we use this sprayer. So this ensures um, smaller particles of the chemicals that are evenly distributed across the surface of the sofa. The next step is going to be, we're going to scrub it down, and the idea is to scrub it down in one direction, so it avoids any distortion of the fibers. Depending on the number of items that need a deep clean, jobs like these usually take three to four hours to complete. I think it is important as we recover from COVID, uh, we want to keep our office premises safe for not only our guests, but for our employees. Every six months, we recommend to actually keep the carpets in residential offices to be cleaner. The reason is dust accumulates in your carpet and you can have a lot of things hiding inside there. And all dirt or dust or anything in the surrounding are going to end up on the floor in the carpet. So over time, this build-up is too much a lot. And then those people who are allergic or can have some reaction are going to feel the effects of, you know, running nose, some cough, that kind of thing. So usually, if it's coming near to a festive period or something, clientele are higher because they generally want to get the office clean or residentials want their carpet all clean before a festive period. Most of our clients are on contract basis also, so we have them doing every six monthly, sometimes quarterly. Depends how the usage of the carpet is and how frequent they need it to be clean. So after we've done the initial two steps, which is the application of the solution and scrub down, we will prepare the hot water extraction uh, machine. So as you can see that he's putting the, uh, the clean water in. 
The idea is we inject hot water into the fabric and is at an ideal temperature to ensure that it breaks down dirt embedded into the fabric and then we remove it all using the suction. Anyone who owns a pet will know that there is pet dander, fur, potential urine problems on their rugs or upholstery. So a lot of these, while it's an issue for the owner, it's not an issue for us because we can remove the pet odor, we can remove the pet urine smells, we can clean up a stain that's on your rug. We've worked with a lot of clients who have issues uh, with pets. They have a lot of these issues, so we help provide those kind of services where we restore the rug, we restore the sofa. Immediately, you notice that the couch is just clean, or at least much cleaner than it was. I was watching them do it, and you could you could literally see the <laughs> the dirt coming off <laughs> the cushion, and it sounds super gross. <laughs> Deep cleaning is a regular service that Big Red has always provided throughout the year. However, during COVID, there was a definite increase in clients wanting to clean their furniture as well as asking for disinfection services. The process is super in-depth, which is really good. So it's not just surface, they're really getting it from deep down inside. They threw in an extra bonus of disinfecting the touch points around the house. So especially on the kitchen, the doors, you know, anywhere where you're using your, your hands to touch, basically. They were efficient, they did their job, and the results were fantastic. I opened a bar and a bistro somewhere in the middle of the year, together with a long-time buddy of mine, a childhood friend of mine. It's something we wanted to do for the longest time, but we all have our day jobs, committed to a new life, so we never really had the time. As time goes by, you know, you get more mature, you want to open up something, so we went back to our old idea of, you know, let's have a bar or bistro or something. So that passion, that whole idea of mingling with people, getting to know people, was always there. So we felt like this is the right time to put some investment aside, you know, and go for it, you know. Just have a go and see what happens. The idea was my my buddy will be the one who will be operating the whole business, you know, and I'll be from afar because my commitment was to Big Red is still there, it's massive. There you go, bro. And opening up, we saw that, you know, back then when we were working in the bar, all our previous guests and everyone actually do come by to give the support again. So it's really nice to see old faces again. Anything, let me know. Thanks, guys. Yes, guys. Congrats, Thank you. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. The amount of workload that he has now, and I have, and that we have in Big Red, is uh, really a full-time job plus some more. So uh, it's great that he managed to find the time to run a bar, to you know renovate the bar, to start a bar, and another business on his own. How long the bar has been open, Lino? Okay? Three months now. So, how many hours of time you put in here? Wow, oh, madness. <laughs> Initially, it was fine. When we first took over, it was the all the long weekends. So, most of those times were spent here. Lah, cleaning up the place, scraping the floor. Basically, this place we took was intact already. Lah. So, it's all self-done. Self-done. Couple of friends just clean up the whole place. Yeah, come He's a great business. He suits Jay. He's a very sociable person. He loves meeting people, loves talking. No, green anything. No, you yeah, four Liverpool fans here. Yeah. So, what? It's good, on. yeah, one menu. Yes, hello. Hi, I'm Dover. Yes, yes, you can help me with that. Uh, sure, uh, why don't you uh, text me your address and uh, I'll reach there within an hour. And then once I come down, I'll assess and then let you know the costing. And then if okay, we can activate the team tonight. Okay, sure, thank you very much. Yep. Start working. Okay, guys, I have to go. Okay, okay. okay. I'll let me know when I get the team ready first. Sure, okay. Bye. 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 We spoke a bit about expanding into India. 
specifically the disaster side of things, right? Now, do you guys have any idea or comments on this first before I advise a little bit further? Oh, I see we need to do the groundwork. Lah. Like what do you mean? Like who are the insurers in India? They are not the same as us. Yeah. They have their own insurance. Yeah. They're all Indian-based insurance majority. The only challenge in India is labour costs and, yeah. uh, and, and uh, logistic. It's going to be the biggest cost for all of us. So that's like what he said. Yeah, your labor is very cheap. But what we got to go for is specialized job. Specialized job means server recovery. We got to go into 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 things where we do not have to use physical manpower. We have to use expertise as or SME subject matter experts to do the work for them. That's where you're gonna make. Yes. Yeah, basically. In that sense. Yeah. So we're actually quite excited about the prospect of potentially opening up our disaster recovery um, service uh, in India. But again, we need to understand the the architecture of uh, how that industry works in in those in India. So we're doing that initial uh, uh, discovery right now and initial research. Uh, but yes, that idea is to open up a disaster recovery arm in India. The idea is not to go into India and say, okay, we're going to get jobs and we're going to get sales. The idea is to be present. That's all, right? So that's the objective. Uh, so, but then, obviously, in, in due process, we'll have to know what is the actual market and stuff like that. We have a distributor now in Hong Kong that sells our products uh, within Hong Kong and Taiwan. You know, similarly, we have uh, arms in Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia. Um, so that 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 has worked out well for us in the last two years. is called Pooja. Wow. Career-minded woman. She has been my strong pillar of support. Good in cooking. Uh, so we can I get knives, please? My daughter Freya and son Kyle. Freya is basically a 16 years old hyper kid who doesn't sit one place quietly and who always wants to be on her feet doing something at all times. So now what happens with your Hindi results? Do you get pulled back or no? And Kyle, who is 13, he loves playing outdoor sports. Most of the time, he is actually out of the house. What? I'm too smart. Yeah, exactly, bro. <laughs> On Sundays especially, we wake up late around 10, 11 o'clock, have a breakfast. We at least half a day together. Sometimes we do swimming, board games, movies. Normally a typical day, but what excites us is that we do not act as a family. We are more like friends in the house. <laughs> Done. Come on, we were the better ones huh? anyway. Ah, oh, yeah. Who won? <laughs> I think he's a gem of a guy, but a man of different characters. He's different in different situations, I would say. At work, he's different. Uh, different scenarios at work, he's different. He's definitely someone that, within one or two degrees of separation, he will get you an answer, or he will find someone for you. So I had a lot of respect of, for him for that. Himanshu, as a boss, is someone that allows you to make mistakes, allows you to make uh, decisions. And Himanshu, as a friend, is someone that always brings up work as well. <laughs> the first time I met him, you could tell, you know, he was hyper, always uh, wired, you know, and always on the go. Yes, Chan here. Hi, Mr. I. Uh, but what kind of crime scene cleanups you all do? Okay. We can actually come down, see what you all do and how you all do it. We can actually provide uh, additional support or even give you training or... Sure, no problem. I'm going to Bangkok, Thailand, 
Uh, I'm going to meet up with a civilian ambulance foundation. So basically what this foundation does is whenever there is an incident or an accident that happened within a vicinity or within an area, most of the time they will be the first on scene. And what they do is they attend to the patients, they will assist them. And then once they are out of the scene, they also will have to clean up the area. They wanted to learn from us how to do crime scene cleanup properly as they are handling a lot and they are worried that, you know, uh, anything may happen and you know their staff who are working on it may get infected or this and that. So going up to Bangkok for a day or two to just follow them around and show them how the trick is being done on that. Later when I go there, I will need the laptop, the Wi-Fi, whatever. I need to send uh, some invoices. I need to. How your operation all settled? All settled. Morning, I settled. So go there, land, land. Uh, then have a good lunch and then sleep off because our work only starts at night in the evening, from six to nine. This is the first time we followed an ambulance. Respond time is fast. It's, it's too good. fast, too fast.